Billy Stevens, Burke and Burke, not for the defendants. Now look at his signature. You know this crazy signature, as bad as it is, he changes it almost every paper. On the next paper it will be different. Now, that signature. Uh, what's it tell you, folks? It tells you. that is unsound, that his mind is unsound, muddled, confused, and empty. Total lies so far at 67. Glendora says theta, selffully, and deceitfully, and clandestinely, saw rock as choose the gravamen. The motion was made about a paper by these three that was now and void. They did not know enough to sign it. A paper is not in order until it is signed by a judge. And in this case, how many judges, folks? Three. Herein is a notice that the Rudolph paper is a nullity. He does not know enough to sign it. They have no say. The paper is null and void. It is not actual. It is a cephalus. No matter how they lie and cheat, they do not change the facts. Voch did not know enough to have a trial. Nor did Rudolph, Angiolillo, nor Tannenbaum. Sarok's paper is a nothing, and it is of no assistance to you, meaning Rudolph, Angiolillo, and Tannenbaum. He does not declare fully familiar with the facts and circumstances because he is not. He does not swear under penalty of perjury that he's telling the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help him God. He is not. Glendora demands to know if anybody paid for this, was it paid for by Satterley, was Sarat pro bono and pro se. He does not represent anybody but Satterley. A defendant cannot defend a co-defendant. He can never defend this. Sarat can never find a defense for this, so he just skips over it. Clandestinely and stealthily. He can never learn this. Sarok has no meritorious defense. Sarok has no law in his memorandum of law. Remember, this is the appeals court that put the case together again and put it together upside down. And this is the court that didn't know enough to acknowledge they're stupid and to correct it. I'm talking about the Harrison Town Court and their stupid clerks. They even confused the judge. There is no case Glendora versus Langelotti. The case is Glendora versus Charles F. Dolan, Cablevision Systems Corporation, all the way down through Langelotti. One case. There is no case Glendora versus Langelotti. Langelotti. Sarok did not serve all parties. He missed ten of them. His paper is a nullity, therefore. Lambda. Remember, this is the court that does not know an appealable order from a decision on a motion. And Siegel caught them. This is the court, the appellate term, that said a decision on a motion is appealable. It is not. There's only two things that are appealable. An order or a judgment. Glendora is appealing about a hundred times. I've been to the appeals courts. So Siegel caught them. So what does this court know? It doesn't know beans. 
What does it add up to? It adds up to trash. It needs to be recycled. God's goodness can affect the same. Puny, pathetic, frivolous trash into something worthy of the public. Page 40. It's doubtful that Sarok be allowed to submit anything to this court. He did not appear at our argument. He has no standing. He was too cowardly to appear at any one of four oral arguments. He keeps writing this trash because he senses you are so desperate that you will use it. Adjure. Adjure. This is Charge, bind, command, solemnly, adjure, as if under oath, and you are not apparently, or under penalty, and I entreat you earnestly to find your oneness with God and stop these crimes. You, who, Rudolf, Angie Lil, Tannenbaum, McKay, Littman, Lacava, Voch, Taman, Stephen Taman, Sara, Sadly Stevens, Burke and Burke, Adjure. When Dora says on TV, quote, no pay raises for New York State judges until they pay us for the damage that they have done to our courts. You know how much they make a year? $136,000 plus. Do you make $136,000 $136, plus a year? They do for this trash. And one of their ghostwriters makes about $70,000 a year. Do you make $70,000 a year? That's taxpayer money. No wonder we have a RICO, Racketeer Influence Crime Court, with this vehicle and traffic fines to finance this junk. No wonder New York State gets in on everything. You get a judgment, you gotta pay for that. New York State. You go to the county clerk to have the sheriff go collect your money that you've been awarded. And you have to pay, 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 pay. Why? To support their $136,000 plus per year. And their $70,000 plus per year. The more they write and talk, the more they make fools of themselves. We said we'd do up to page 40. We got some rejoicing to do. 10.45, we rejoice for music. 11 o'clock, we rejoice for the orchestration. At 11.15, we rejoice for the voices, singing voices. And it's almost 11.30, we rejoice that Glendora is here with you to report to you the truth about the lies in court and to abjure that if anything bad ever happens to you, if anybody steals from you or violates you in any way, you have no place to go. You will go to court and you will find what I found, totally depraved. And before you stand before that man in the black dress, his soul has been sold 20 times before he got to you. There's nothing left for you. Here's a funny joke. This woman was up in the woods 
and near the lake and the, the boat was in the lake and uh, she decided how nice it would be to go out and sit in the boat in the lake and just read her book. That's all she wanted to do was to read her book. So she's reading her book and the sheriff comes along or the game warden or somebody. He says, you can't fish here and I'm giving you a citation. She says, all I'm doing is reading my book. He says, well, you have all the equipment. She says, well, I'm going to charge you with sexual harassment. Why? I didn't even touch you. No, but you have all the equipment. This man engaged a taxi. He's sitting in the back seat and they're driving along. The man in the back seat uh, touches the uh, shoulder of the cab driver and the cab driver jumps and he almost loses control of the car and the passenger said, oh I'm sorry, I didn't mean to disturb you by tapping you on the soldier, his shoulder and he says, that's okay, he says, I just said I drove a hearse for 37 years. These two little boys were in a graveyard and they were underneath a hickory tree and they were dithying up the hickory nuts. One for you, one for me, one for you, one for me, one for you, one for me. And outside the graveyard, the fence, was another little boy. And he horrified, in horrified manner, ran across the street and told a man, he says, come over here, come over here, you've got to stop this. He says, it's the devil and the God, and they're divvying up the souls, one for you and one for me. And so the man comes over and he listens and he hears one for you, one for me, one for you, one for me. And they divvied up all of the nuts there and they said, now we got to do the two nuts by the fence. What happens when you cross, what do you get when you cross an owl with a hootenanny? Forget it. I was just going to pick up Sebastian and show him to you. And what do you get when you cross a brook and a stream? Wet feet. You going to come and see the people? People didn't get a good look at your nice face. <laughs> Can't you look a little more cordial? <laughs> You're singing. That's pretty good. You want another tender bit? Okay. We'll take a break and we'll feed you another tender bit. Yes, you did eat all of yours. It's fair clean. Uh, so, what do you get when you cross an owl and a goat? A hoot and nanny. Peter says that money talks and his is saying goodbye. And Susan KK who gives her life her life to rescuing cats. She rescued five kittens and one of them disappeared and she looked all over the house. All over the house. She went out in the woods with a flashlight at night to see if the kitten went out there. Guess where the kitten ended up? The kitten was found in the laundry ba basket at the laundry. And the owner of the laundry fell in love with the kitten and wanted to adopt it. Man pulled the ripcord on the parachute and it didn't work and here he is plummeting toward the earth at 32 feet per second per second, accelerating. And he sees another man coming up, and the man going down says, Do you know anything about parachutes? And the man coming up says, No! Do you know anything about gas stoves? Valentine's? Be my one and only Valentine? And it comes 24 in a box.
this one's kind of cute church jokes. i got to stop telling church jokes or I'll be excommunicated. Three-year-old saying the Lord's Prayer, Our Father who does art in heaven. Harold is his name. A little boy was overheard praying, Lord, if you can't make me a better boy, don't worry about it. I'm having a really good time as I am. After the christening of his baby brother in church, uh, Jason sobbed all the way home in the back seat of the car and his father asked him three times what was wrong and finally the boy replied that preacher said he wanted us brought up in a Christian home and I wanted to stay with you guys one particular four year old prayed and forgive us our trash baskets as we forgive those who put trash in our baskets a Sunday school teacher asked her children as they were on the way to church service why is it necessary to be quiet in church? And one bright little girl replied, Because people are sleeping. A mother was preparing pancakes for her sons, Kevin 5 and Ryan 3. The boys began to argue over who would get the first pancake, and their mother was saw the opportunity for a moral lesson, and she said, If Jesus were sitting here, he would say, Let my brother have the first pancake. I can wait. And so Kevin turned to his younger brother and said, Brian, you be Jesus. A wife invited some people to dinner. At the table, she turned to their six-year-old daughter and said, Would you like to say the blessing? Well, I wouldn't know what to say, the girl replied. Well, just say what you hear mommy say, the wife answered. So the daughter bowed her head and said, Lord, why on earth did I invite all these people to dinner? Eleven thirty AM We rejoice about something every fifteen minutes. I rejoice that Sebastian is a vegan, that he's a vegetarian. All right, every at eleven o'clock we should have counted 15 blessings. Your turn. You don't want to do it? How about the universe born alive? Food, clothing, and a home. Freedom, independence. No catastrophes. Finances. Education. TV career. Your career. Your business. Your spouse. Your spouse's job. That's good, 15. Okay, we'll take a break, and then we'll come back to letting Sarok, Angiolillo, Rudolph, McCabe, Tannenbaum, Littman, Lacava know that they have violated the constitutions of the state of New York and the United States of America, that they are therefore disqualified. Step down. So folks, we're up to page 61. Let's see how long it's going to take us to do 61 to 80. Um, Sarok says, in the terms of any renewal and hence any oral contract. Is that correct? No, it isn't. We need pages 41 to 61. That's 61 to 80. This paper's falling all apart, so am I. Okay, uh, there's a prayer for all of us. A very nice prayer. Lord, dismiss us with thy blessing. Fill our hearts with joy and peace. Let us each thy love possessing. 
triumph in redeeming grace. Oh, refresh us, oh, refresh us, traveling through this universe. Iota, what do you do when the judges doing the judging are worse than the judge being judged? What do you do when the judge doing the judging is worse than the judge being judged? Sarok fails to defend over 30 points that Glendora made and hence admits to all of them. 86 is reserved. This was dated April the 19th, 2007, Patriot's Day. You know, Concord, Lexington, Paul Revere, the shot that was heard around the world. Who said the British are not coming? Paul Revere's. Yours in truth, and I'm more Patriot, and I'm more New York High, and in horror at the ineptitude of judges, lawyers, and clerks. Now we start Part C, page 45. Next we go to Glendora versus Ecott. This is a case of a woman who went back on her word. Her next offense was to lie about it. Her third offense was to try to cover it up. Then comes a dirty lawyer, alleged that he's a lawyer, there's no proof, named Laura McQuaid, an intern for one year, abused by a law firm, named Sally Stevens Burke and Burke, Sally Stevens Jerk and Jerk. She is addled and let go after a year of enslavement. You call the law firm Sally Stevens Jerk and Jerk, you ask for Laura McClay, no longer with the firm. The dirty law firm is Sally Stevens Burke and Burke, a liar for hire law firm. The model lawyer is Robert M. Callaghy. He is a model liar because lawyer because he lies, steals, and cheats. And he died uh, two years later. Next comes a dirty town justice named Stephen G. Toman. Stephen is so inept he does not know that the Unified Justice Court Act of 1975 prohibits summary judgments. He is so incompetent he does not know there has to be a trial in small claims. This is Stephen G. Toman in Phillipstown. He even read Littman's, he even failed to read Littman's small claims guide. No witnesses were called, no testimony was taken, no evidence was presented. This is called due process of law. Uh, Toman's gross failing is his disamericanism. Add him to violation of constitutional rights and of due process of law. Add Voch to the same. Voch is in the Harrison Town Court. And both Voch and Toman violated New York State Civil Practice Law and Rules, Section 2219. A judge has 60 days to rule on a motion. Neither one of them did. So their, most, their answers are nullities. Voch took Flag Day 2004 to April Fool's Day 2005. Uh, Toman took October 2004 to June 2005. Year. Glendora's excoriations of Toman of circa 600 pages lists many more ineptitudes. The same applies to Voch. Glendora sued Toman in the United States District Court, Idaho. Toman hired a puny lawyer named Brian Julian. Julian wrote baby papers, infantile arguments, ignominiously, silly briefs, untimely, desperate, and profligate, and Toman was frenetic. Meanwhile, Ecock, in her lying and cover-up, is making an atrocious record for her progeny, a record forever on paper, on television, and on the World Wide Web. As if this wasn't enough, bad lawyers add three more, Rudolph, McCabe and Littman. Why is the Chief Judge of the Office of Administration of New York State Courts, Jonathan Littman, sitting on the appellate term, Supreme Court, 9th and 10th Judicial Districts? Why? Well, these three work for the same mob, whatever mob it is, as Duvoch, Toman, McQuaid, Callaghy, 
Sadly, Stevens, Burke, and Burke, Singer, and Sorok. How is this court mob tied into the international bankers Rothschild, Warburg, et al., Glendora sued in 2006? So Glendora did not get the $3,000. They got it. Glendora was deprived of her property without due process of law, the Fifth Amendment. How do you suppose, folks, that they divvied up Glendora's $3,000? Poor Deborah, her children and husband, did not get any either, Glendora speculates. The courts are supposed to help you. They do not help you. The courts are supposed to help you. You will find if you have to go to court. They do not help you. They are total failures. Glendora spent much more money, hours and ergs, than $3,000. It was like $6,000. But did the courts help? No, they are totally useless. Hear me? The courts are totally useless. And state judges think they deserve a raise. They make about $136,000 plus a year. They deserve a raise for ruining our courts. No way, Jose, must this happen. Make them pay us for the harm they have done the courts. We are on page 48. Remember, this is the court, Angio Lillo, Rudolph McKay, Tannenbaum, who cannot read. They cannot read a caption. Asked to correct the stupids of the Harrison clerks, they turned the case upside down and captioned it backwards. Langelotti is the last defendant. They captioned it Glendora versus Langelotti. Well, Rudolph, McCabe, and Littman do not know enough that there has to be trial in small claims. And, weakly, pitifully, foolishly, they covered up for Toman. They made themselves look silly, and this is not the first, second, third, or fourth time that they've done it. Their strained, gobbly gook was a lie and a cheat, and it was not the first time by any means. This is noon. What do we rejoice about? That we are trying to correct the fact that you have been robbed of courts. We rejoice. For this, they get $136,000 plus a year. They are thieves. They are crooks. I'm talking about the judges, specifically, of Voch and Toman and Andrew Lillo and McCabe and Tannenbaum and Lippmann and LaCava. They are crooks. This is consumer fraud. They all must be fined, jailed, and made to cash in everything they own as restitution for their damages to all of us that they have cheated these decades. They are scam artists. Glendora wants her money back on all these cases, it's consumer fraud, and she must learn how to get their surety bonds. Now, here's the definition of fraud. I want you to listen to this carefully, if you can read it. An intentional perversion of truth for the purpose of inducing reliance upon you to make you part with some valuable thing belonging to you surrender a legal right a false representation or a matter of fact whether by words or by conduct by false or misleading allegations or by concealment of that which should have been disclosed which deceives and is intended to deceive so that you folks shall be shall act upon it to your legal injury that's it be careful that's what fraud is and that's what these people have done who are these people I think their names are on the screen Voch, 
Thomas. And you 